A little while ago, I reviewed a rocket stove, a folding rocket stove from the company by Arnaud, the designer Arnaud out of Belgium. And during that review, I mentioned that it was his second design, his first being the Combus. Well, Arnaud sent me the Combus. This is the updated version, version two. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this stove, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Arnaud of the company by Arnaud out of Belgium for sending me the Combus. Combus. I still struggle with pronouncing that version two. And I'll also show you that along with that came this pot set. And this is actually an option you can purchase. You can purchase the stove separately or with the pot set. So I'll speak to both of them. So what I'll do is I'll draw you in a little closer. We'll take a closer look at the stove and the pot set. I'll give you some specifications for each and then we'll do some cooking over it. All right, so this is the stuff sack that the pot and stove set arrived in, laying on the ground, getting all kinds of pine needles over it. Good quality nylon, certainly up to the task of storing everything inside. And since it, the pot does get a little bit dirty, it's nice to have something to keep your pack clean. So here is the stove. Now the stove comes disassembled and uh, with the feed wrap stored inside and the pot rest on top. So the pot rest I'll take off just to show you how the stove goes together. So it is dirty. I've been using it today even and uh, yeah. I'm going to be good and dirty by the time I finish this demonstration. So this is the feed ramp. It does have this plate inside so that will slide down inside after I install the feed ramp into the stove itself. And you do that just by sliding it in. It doesn't go in very far, but it goes in far enough that it's locked in nice and secure. Now the feed wrap will go in. The feed wrap is there so that you can slide wood down inside on top of the feed ramp, but still allow air to go down inside underneath the feed ramp. That's a bit better. Okay, trying to do it without looking at it. So I'll just give you some close-ups of it so you can see the feed wrap where it's locked into the notches. Two-thirds of the of the feed wrap is open for the wood and one-third underneath for the air to flow down inside. You can see down inside, hopefully that's showing up, there is a grate inside off of the floor about an inch and a half that allows for the wood to be remain off of the floor. So of course you can get some uh, good amount of ash buildup in the bottom before it starts to choke off the air. And the ramp itself actually locks into that ramp just to keep everything in, in place. Now just let me bring the pot rest up. So when the pot rest uh, is stored, you would fold in these legs. And of course you can use it with the legs folded in or folded out depending on the size of your pot. So anything from a small size to a large size. So it's not just a pot stand. It is a bit of a focuser when it's sitting on top. So it does narrow off the flow of air through the top and kind of focus it quite well, as you'll see, it, it produces quite a jet of flame coming out of the top. Uh, yeah, so the only thing I'll say about this before moving on is it's a little awkward for storage. It would be nice if you could flip it upside down, but you'll see in a second the design does not allow for that. So this is worth showing right now. Look how thick the walls are on that, on this stove. And that is because this is actually designed properly for a wood or a rocket stove. A properly designed rocket stove has insulation in its walls. Now this is a very small rocket stove and you're going to wonder if there's a whole lot of benefit. Well as you'll see there is a whole lot of benefit to having this insulated. So why is the insulation there in the first place? Well what I have discovered in rocket stove designs is that because they have a chimney that's quite tall in relation to its diameter, and of course the theory, not the theory, the, the physics of it is, is that will draw air in and up through at high velocity, resulting in a very complete combustion of the wood inside. Problem is, you tend to lose a lot of heat out through the sides of the chimney. Not everything is be being delivered to the top, through the top to the pot or pan or whatever you have on. So unfortunately you lose a lot of heat out unless of course it's insulated. So when you look at the very large uh, rocket stoves that are, are used for, uh, stationary for camping or, or in a lot of places third world countries is a cleaner way of using wood. 
they're huge, right? They're huge like the size of a bucket would be, but a small central chimney and feed ramp and everything else is insulation. So this is what our node has done. He has used a glass ceramic fiber inside of this wall to uh, insulate it. And it yes, it does. It does provide some real value as you'll see when we get started. So pot rest goes on top and I'll demonstrate lighting it up in a few moments time. All right, so here is the pot set. And I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the pot set. There's a few things that differs this pot set in version two from the one in version one. So this pot has a bale on the pot itself, as you can see, again, very dirty, because I've been using it. And butterfly, swing out butterfly handles on the side. Same features as on, number, on version one. And markings inside, you'll no, you're not going to see them on the outside. Maybe you'll see them on the inside. Markings up to one liter right about here on the side. So yeah, about three quarters of an inch down from the top, you can get all the water right up to one liter inside with imperial markings on the opposite side of the vertical line. And this being the bowl cup, whatever you want to call it, locks open like this. And now it's going to sit on top of the pot like this when you go to use it. It's taller than the original one was because the stove itself is taller and it needed to be a taller pot set in order to contain everything inside. I will share with you right now, this is probably my one gripe with this setup. The other design had a uh, I don't know, a pot with a different rim on it, a different lip, and it would just sit inside securely loosely. In other words, it wouldn't be any problem getting it off. If you can see where the rim is on this and the almost half inch of extension beyond it, I find this a little challenging to get on and off. I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but I just want you to be aware that it's a little challenging when you're trying, if you're checking your soup, if you're cooking soup inside, like I will be for the demonstration, it can be a little char challenging to get it off and on. Very snug, very secure, Maybe it's too much so. So I have to play with it a little bit to get it on and off. All right, so that's about the only con I can give you for the pot set is that it'd be nice if it was just a little easier to put the mug, cup, pot, whatever you want to top on top of it. Okay, let's go back to the stove itself and I'll give you some specifications before we get it into action. I will be looking at my spec sheet just to make sure I give you the right information. And of course, all the information I'm giving you now will appear in the video description for your reference. So overall height of the stove with the pot rest on top is 17 centimeters, which is 6.7 inches. Diameter of the stove is 10 centimeters, which is 3.9 inches. Stove weight, 900 grams or two pounds. Yeah, it's a heavy stove. I, there's no denying that. This is a heavy stove, but that's because it has one centimeter of that, uh, what, what I call the, the ceramic fiber insulation inside of the wall. And by the way, it has a double bottom, which also is raised off of the ground a little bit. So I would still make sure I'm on a, on a fire safe surface, but this does give you some separation between the burn chamber and the ground because it has a double floor and is slightly raised up. So it is a heavy stove, but it's heavy with a purpose. The material is 304 stainless steel. All right, so that is the stove itself. Let's go back to the pot set. Pot set, 18 centimeters high, seven inches. Of course, it had to be just higher than the stove in order to get it inside. 12 centimeters in diameter, 4.7 inches. Pot volume, one liter to the line I showed you. Bowl is 450 milliliters to the line inside, the line being that rim that I showed you. So just short of two cups. Weight of this set is 371 grams, 13.1 ounces. So that's about what you would expect from a pot set of this size. Material, 304 stainless steel. Deal. All right, time to put some lunch on and I'll demonstrate how this stove works. All right, it's getting a bit windy out, so I did set the Comboius. Comboius. Shaman 90 is going to correct me, please do, that's fine. In a fire pit here for wind protection, uh, that's about all. Uh, the woods are getting very, very dry already in this spring, so we're not far off from a fire ban, but uh, right now I can still do this. Having said that, it's always good to take the precautions of keeping it somewhere safe to use. So all I've done so far is preload it, 
little tiny sticks like this that I have picked up off of the ground inside. And I haven't stacked it full, as you'll see why in a second. In fact, I think I can do it now, is I find that if you put any more than that, then it's a little hard to get, it's even hard now, to get the ring on top. Oh, that's fine. All right, the rest will work down. So now what I can do is I can just continue to feed more sticks. Even if they're a little taller, I can feed them down inside. So there's, I guess, a number of ways you could light this. The easiest way for me is I'm going to take a fire plug. I'm going to light it, and I'm going to shove it down underneath the feed ramp so that the flames will come up through the floor and catch the wood from below. That should be plenty exposed on the plug. Let's get it lit. And they do light up nice and quick. And I'll just slide that down underneath the wood. Now, it is going to take a second or two for that to catch, but the twigs are dry off the ground. Now, the reason I'm using twigs off the ground, of course, is that's the whole point of a small stove like this, is that you don't do a lot of wood processing. There's absolutely no reason to. You should be able to find your fuel for free off the ground without having to cut down large branches or trees or anything else to get the fuel you'll need. And as you'll see, this stove will do very well at that. In fact, some of the wood I discovered as I snapped it is not as dry as you might always want to. Here's the cool thing about this stove. As it gets hot, the heat that's retained inside of these walls, and they will stay cold for quite a while on the outside, the heat that's retained inside of these walls will make combustion much more efficient. What I have found, and maybe I should be able to demonstrate as well, is that because it's a small stove, you're feeding a lot of wood inside, true, but if you, for whatever reason, don't maintain the flame going as high as you would like it to, and you run down to coals, you throw a few sticks in through the feed ramp, and all of a sudden they're back in flame because of all the retained heat. It just stays hotter much longer. Now you can see I'm actually getting behind here in the work I should be doing here of loading some sticks inside. Look at the flames coming up through the top of that. I'm not sure if the microphone is picking it up. Yeah, I was a little slow to get some of these things in. But it's starting to roar like you would hope a good rocket stove will. Now, I know it's not smoke-free yet. Give it a chance. I, I've actually got a fair amount of wood loaded inside. In fact, that's probably all the wood I'm going to need to put in it to get it going because at this point, as that wood catches on, as again, as some of it's a little bit damp, I can see I'll start feeding in longer pieces like this down inside the feed ramp. So you don't have to do a whole lot of wood processing. You just need to get your initial fire going and once the stove warms up, it works much, much better. Now, I think, yeah, I'm going to say that's probably ready to put my pot on top. Always a good test, oh, except for the pine needles that are stuck to the bottom of it, of course. Always a good test when you put a pot on top to see just how much it dampens flames down by restricting airflow at the top. And actually, I'm going to take it back off again. Part of the reason it's got all kinds of pine needles on top or on the bottom. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, there's quite a bit of clearance at the top. As you can see, the flames are now coming out around the bottom of it. Occasionally you're going to see, if I get a bit of a downdraft, some of the flames coming back out through the freed ramp. That should be kept at a minimum. Now, it should, by design, stay at a minimum, where preferentially air will move in through the feed ramp and up through, and not the flame. you should not see a whole lot of flames coming out through. So once it really gets going, then you're going to see a much more efficient burn that way. Already, I can start loading some sticks down through. Well, right up to the amount you can get. It's really not... I mean, you can control, uh, control the amount of heat by controlling the amount of fuel that you want inside of this. But I want to get my water hot fairly quickly so that I can get my soup on and uh, enjoy that. So I will bring you back in a few minutes as my water does come to a boil. I want you to be able to see what happens when the wood 
uh, starts to burn down, how quickly it will light back up again with just a few sticks in through the feed ramp. All right, I'll bring you back in a few minutes. Okay, I soup came to a boil, simmered it for a few minutes, took it off, intentionally let the stove run down and fuel just to demonstrate what it's like no, you can't touch the side of it, so it is plenty hot. I just want to demonstrate what it is like to throw a few sticks in on what is barely any coals left inside of this. I think I'll just leave those two in. Maybe I'll throw a couple down inside from the top. Just a couple of little ones. Maybe a couple of little ones coming down through here. I can't even see any red glowing in there. I'm not sure if you can or not. I'm trying to get behind it to see. No, there's not much in the way of red glow down in there, but I can tell you it is plenty hot. Throw a few little ones like this. Yeah, this stove is something that does not cool off in a hurry. So if you're looking or if you're used to using titanium stoves, which, uh, you know, you can get going quickly. They're light to carry, uh, you know, quick to use, and then quick to cool off so you can get back on the trail. This is not that. <laughs> this is just the opposite of that. This is not slow to get going, very quick to get going, in fact, as you saw, but this is going to take a long time to cool off because of all that insulation. Did I let it go down too far? Let me see if I give it one quick blow inside of what will happen. All right, we're lit. It's going to take a second again, but that just gives you an idea how quickly you can bring the fire back, even though I let it go down to just bare coals and almost gray coals of that, not much in the way of red showing through, but already that wood that I put in there probably would have combusted on its own if I had waited another couple of seconds, but I just wanted to hurry things along, so I blew into it. But as you can see, it lit right back up. It's right back up at full force again. All kinds of concentrated smoke-free flame coming out of the top of it. All right, I am going to let this cool down now intentionally while I have my lunch, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, a few closing words on the Combuis, I think I got it right that time, 2.0 or version 2 uh, rocket stove from the company by Arnaud. I think what I'll do is I'll just start with the cook set, the pot set itself for a moment and so we can get that out of the way. So I did talk to Arnaud about this, about my pet peeve, if you will, of uh, how this lid fits on top. And he said, yes, it is a different design than went with the original stove. Part of the reason is because they had to go to a taller version of the pot because uh, to, to include the taller version of the stove. But when I showed him literally the issue or the concern I have, he said he understood. He would take it into consideration. And if there was anything they could do to modify it, then they would do so in future generations. Now, I just want to be clear. It's not a deal breaker. It's just something that I find just a tiny bit annoying in terms of use. Obviously, I'm using it and I'm not having a big issue with it. If you don't tend to take your lid off on, or off and on very often, then it's not a, an issue at all. If you're just boiling water for a rehydrated meal, just leave it on the whole time. In fact, the pour spout here, you can actually pour water from it with the lid on. So in a lot of ways, I guess you probably don't have to take the lid off, but where I was cooking a soup today um, and I needed to stir it, I needed to take the lid off. So what I did is when the water did come to a boil and I let the wood die back some so I could simmer it without burning it, I just left the lid off at that point. It, you know, I didn't need to be putting it on and off. Okay, so the pot set out of the way. And I just want to mention again, you can purchase the stove without the pot set, but it makes a lot more sense to have the two of them together. Okay, do you know this has been 20 minutes since the fire went out and it's still warm. It's not hot. I had to wait before I could pick it up with my bare hands, but I can still feel the warmth. So the insulation in this is highly effective at keeping the stove warm. And as you saw, being uh, able to keep the burn chamber hot 
for an extended period of time means for a much more efficient burn right off of the top. The wood reaches its temperature faster. It maintains its combustion temperature longer. And when it runs down to just hot coals, then you can reignite the fire very easily because of that maintained temperature inside of it. A couple thoughts on this is the, uh, you're wondering maybe how much ash built up inside of it. And I, unfortunately I did dump it out. I Actually, let's just see if I, how much is left inside even now, if I can show you. I don't know if that shows. That's all there is. I didn't dump the ash out of it this time. I did the last time, but I just recall that's all there is from quite an, quite an extended burn in this. And it's just white powdered ash. And the reason is, is you get such an efficient burn and the wood is all consumed. Very little of it is left behind to leave ash in the bottom of the stove. So yeah, very efficient. Now, it, it, that's only gonna last for so long. What do they say this had? Inch, inch and a half clearance between the double uh, layer floor and the fire grate inside. So yep, that's, that's what you're gonna get about that long. I had it going this time for, I don't know, 40 minutes or so, I guess. Okay, a couple thoughts on this. It does exactly what a good rocket stove design should do. It, come, it heats up quickly, the wood ignites quickly, it can use just found wood, you don't have to process it. A little bit of sticks in the top, get it lit, start feeding your long sticks in from the side, feed them in constantly. Uh, you saw clean burning flame coming out of the top once it get going, of course, so a, and a high jet of flame. So it's a well-designed rocket stove in a very compact form. I just want to bring the pot stand back up on top. It was a game. Yeah, very well-designed rocket stove works very well but it's heavy. It is heavy at two pounds. So this is not a backpacking stove, at least not very far. Do you know if you uh, were using this and you, you, well, I guess the benefits do outweigh the weight issue in terms of how efficient it does make the stove, but it's still not a lightweight stove. Maybe that's the best way to say it. So just be aware before you look at this, how are you going to use your stove? If you're looking for a lightweight stove for a long distance hiking, this is not the one for you. Take a look at the fire tower, the other design by Arnaud. I think you'll find that is a much more uh, hiker friendly in terms of weight and compactness. This is neither compact nor light but it, it does it ever work the way it, a good rocket stove should work. I guess those are my thoughts on it. I will continue to use it. I probably just won't take it very far into the woods. It's, it's such an efficient stove that I like using it. It just works so well that uh, it's, a, it's a good working stove. It's just heavy. That's the only thing I can say about it. If you don't mind the weight, if you're not hiking long distances, this will really do a good job. Minimum amount of wood, very clean burning, and you can get your water up to temperature or whatever else you're cooking. You can certainly put a pan over top of this. It doesn't have to be the pot set. Okay, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. Again, all the specifications as well as the links to the company by our node where you can purchase this will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.